welcome biologists. In this session, we're going to be taking a look at a myelinated neuron and the significance on frequency of impulse transmission. This is part three of this specification point. For the other parts, please take a look at the previous videos. All right, so first of all, we're going to have a look at um, this all or nothing law, which is very, very popular on the exam. Now, as you can see here, um, I have some kind of a stimuli, a low stimuli, that's caused some of the sodium voltage gate channels to open. Now, as a result of some of the voltage gate channels to open, some sodium has rushed in along the electrochemical gradient and it's caused a tiny increase in the membrane's potential. However, because this is only a low stimuli and it doesn't open enough sodium voltage gate channels, this increase does not reach the threshold value of approximately minus 50, minus 55 millivolts. Therefore, an action potential is not generated in this particular instance. Now, you can see here in the second one here, the stimuli is slightly larger than the first one. But again, this increase in membrane potential <clears throat> does not go above that threshold value. So therefore, I do not get an action potential generated in this one. However, in the, sec in the third and the fourth stimuli, as you can see, these are much larger stimuli and I get, therefore, an action potential generated because they open up enough sodium voltage gate channels to go above the threshold value and therefore establish an action potential. Now, as you can see in both these instances, the action potential is exactly the same magnitude. This last one here is a, a stronger stimulus, but the action potential is exactly the same. Now, this is the all or nothing law. It basically means you either have an action potential or you don't. You don't have a bigger action potential for a larger stimulus and you don't have a small action potential for a small stimuli. You either have an action potential which is the same magnitude or you have nothing at all because it doesn't reach that threshold value. And it's really important that we recognise it's the all or nothing law. The next thing that we need to be aware of and which I have seen in the Mark scheme a couple of times is this word generator potential. Now, a generator potential, this is generated when I've got a sensory receptor that results in an appropriate stimulus, which either excites or inhibits an action potential. Now, we're going to look a little bit more about inhibitory action potentials a bit later on. But a generator potential can be um, triggered by that stimulus at the beginning. And it's either going to go above the threshold value or it won't. Now, um, in regards to a strong and a weak stimuli, as you can see in this image here, if I have a weak stimulus that, yes, it, um, it triggers enough sodium volt gate channels to open to go above the threshold value, I will get an action potential. However, in a weak stimulus, I get very few action potentials. Whereas, as you can see here in B, um, it's a stronger stimulus, so therefore I have a lot more frequent um, action potentials. Now, as you can see in both the weak and the strong stimuli, the magnitude or the height, if you like, it's really important to use the word magnitude though. The magnitude, each of the action potentials is exactly the same in, in the weak and the strong. But in the strong stimulus, I have a lot more of a higher frequency of the action potentials generated due to this stronger stimulus. The last thing we need to be aware of is this myelination of the neuron. So anything in a red box here is taken directly from the MART scheme. So myelination increases the rate of impulse transmission and this is because it's solitary conduction and what happens here is the Schwann cell which wraps around the neuron it creates an insulating barrier which means I cannot get movement of ions across the membrane where I've got my Schwann cell which are the blue bits here wrapped around my, my neuron. The gaps in between these Schwann cells are called the nodes of Ranvier. And that is the only place on the axon or a dendron where the movement of ions can occur. So therefore, the membrane can only be depolarized at the nodes of Ranvier. Um, it creates a longer localized circuit, which means it, it the movement of ions can only occur in this kind of arrow, where the arrows are. If the, if the Schwann cell wasn't there, it would be occurring all the way along in shorter circuits and therefore it increases the rate of impulse transmission. Really important here, you do not say that the impulse jumps from node to node because they do not like that on the exam. We need to use the term the membrane, and it's really important we use membrane and not axon and not nerve. The membrane is only depolarized at the nose of Manvia. Guys, good luck with your exams. I hope this has helped and all the best with your studies.